Back on Morning Line, our final segment with Vice Mayor Jim Shulman. We want to squeeze in Ron, who waited through the mm -hmm. break real quick. We'll take his call. Ron, good morning. Hi, Ron. Yeah. I wanted to ask the question to both of you. Didn't Channel 5 do a news report on our guard up there in Davidson County that punched holes into coffee cups of the prisoners in Davidson County and that let that hot coffee pour out on those prisoners? Yet that guard was able to go to the police academy and they said on his uh, the report, if I read it correct, do not rehire. Yet he was able to go to the police academy and get certified as a police officer, go to Bedford County, go to work for Bedford County, get fired there, go to Marshall County and kill a man with five kids in one of Channel 5 reports showing him on top of the oh, guy okay. and I'm telling him I to, was... to not suffocate him. Yet yeah. he still goes to Mount Pleasant and gets another job as a police officer, gets a real good report on his background, yeah. and then they tell him that uh, he tells the news reporter, or the it's reported, that uh, he's going to continue in police work. Yeah, um, I think we've done several stories. The, the ones he's referring to, I think Ben Hall has done some mm -hmm. on some of the hiring of some of these individuals that got in trouble. Uh, Jason Lamb did a story on this fellow that was hired and the police chief's taking fire for why didn't you do more of a background check and the vetting. Yeah, there, there's absolutely no excuse for individuals in these stories the way Ben and Jason you know, reported them to be hired. And I don't know if it's because there's a shortage and a premium and they're just desperate to bring people, which I can't believe. I see fine cadets graduating all the time. Um, there's no excuse for not doing your due diligence, especially when you're hiring for someone for some, a job as important as law enforcement, and you bring in, frankly, someone who should never, ever be in that position based on their past record. You have a record there, and you didn't do your diligence. You still hired this guy? I'm like, what the heck? People's yeah. heads need to roll when that happens. I have no problem with that. That's incompetence at the top when you make stupid hires. You are supposed to do your due diligence. You're supposed yeah. to make sure that you, uh, particularly for situations like you're talking about, hiring people that are in the Come police on, force. Man. Yeah, you got to be. You, you got to make sure that you do your due diligence. Um, all right, real quick, since this is our last segment, um, how are you feeling about the Grand Prix? No uh, speed bumps out there. Uh, no speed bumps on those things. I've seen the city getting ready for it. Um, What's it, your take? How, how do you think it's going to play out? I mean, do you think we're ready for it? I know portions of the area are going to be blocked off for those three days. Look, I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not a, a big racing person. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really follow it. Um, I've always thought it would be interesting to do something like this. Yeah. Um, unlike everything else, um, it's going to create roadblocks in different parts of the city. People need to be aware. Just know about it. Um, but I've seen the city getting ready for it, and uh -huh. then I've heard all these people go, this is so interesting to do this. That's what I think. I'm like you. I'm, I'm, I'm not the most savvy race car, and this is very different from NASCAR, what this Formula <coughs> One or Indy is. Yeah. But I, I'm like you. I'm kind of like, I think this is neat. I, I, and the reason is it's because it's being held on our city streets, and they're going to be going 200 miles an hour. Okay, not being chased by cops, right. but 200 miles an hour in these high-performance vehicles through the city. I would love to see. I just think it's neat, and it's, to me, it's got this very European feel, you know? You know? Well, it's kind Nashville of cool. is becoming European. I don't know what that means. But, I just um, think, it's, I think it's a neat, different event. Do, do you get the sense from Butch and others that, I mean, there's going to be, a, you know, a, a large crowd for this? I understand people are coming from not just around the country, but from overseas to see this. I thought... Again, when I first heard about it, I thought, in Nashville, we're going to do this? Mm -hmm. And I've been amazed by all the people who are interested in it. Well, I and think a lot of people are going to come to saying, we're going to come because this is really neat, and it's in Nashville. I, yeah. I mean, just against that backdrop, I, we didn't get to talk much about this, but we all see what's happening with COVID right now and vaccinations and, and the spike. And yet we're open, and all these people are going to come, which is wonderful. I hope they're vaccinated. But do you uh, just have any concerns, you know, with what happens with our schools now and kind of the state stand on whether masks can be mandated or not? So I know there's a meeting of the school board on Thursday night, emergency right. meeting, to talk about this. I saw what the Speaker of the House said yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, w I want people to, to try to work through this and figure out what is the right thing to do. Um, 
I know there's you know different different ideas on different sides. I get that. But in the end, we want everybody to be safe. So what is the proper thing to do? Now, I will tell you this. I think, um, um, I think it is responsible for people to start refocusing on some of this stuff. I, I don't think we're going to go backwards. I don't, I don't think we're going to start, at least not yet, in terms of pulling re putting yeah. restrictions on. But um, I think you'll see me wearing my mask more. Yeah. Because I think um, I'm not sure what's happening with this Delta strain. Um, I think we just need to be careful. Yeah. It, it, just because, I mean, you know this, just because we'd like to think the pandemic is over, it's not. Mm -hmm. It didn't go away just because we all of a sudden opened everything back up. Which vaccine did you get? I got the Pfizer vaccine. Pfizer, and I got Moderna, so that's the two shots. And, uh, and I'm like you. I mean, as vaccinated, if we get it, it will not be pleasant, but we, we should, of course, survive it. But we could be carriers of it. I wear this mask to protect other people. I, because I, I know there's others out there that, for whatever reason, um, you know, choose not to be vaccinated, which I think is very foolish. But, you know, if I'm a carrier, I don't want to be around you and give you something that could kill you. So, so I'm going to wear this so to easy. protect the people yeah. out there that are choosing, for whatever reason, not to wear masks or not to get vaccinated. We have a council meeting tonight. If you tune in, you'll see me wearing a mask. Yeah. Not mandated. No. But for people's safety... It's not that hard. Just wear one. Yeah, you just have to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the school board meeting on Thursday. Anything else happening tonight uh, at the Metro Council? No, meeting we have event? a really long calendar. We have a lot of um, bills on public hearing. Um, we have some bills on preservation of um, historic properties. Um, I've looked through the calendar. Um, and there's one thing that's kind of interesting. There's some money uh, going on. It's a late file resolution by Councilmember Rosenberg on getting some money into trying to deal with some of these homeless encampments. Okay. And so we'll see how that works. You get calls on that every once in a while? Oh, we're getting lots Emails? of calls on yeah. it right now. Yeah, just about where they are. And I've, I've seen some. Like I said, I want to, you know, the homeless, sometimes they find areas to camp out, you know, along the river. You know, and if, sometimes when I'm on the river, I'll look and you can see where they are. And you don't know that's there, really, unless you're on the river. Yeah. But then I've seen some other places where it's quite obvious that they're under a bridge embankment where a bunch of traffic going by. And I know there's certain guidelines. I want to help them, okay? But I also know they can't just be pitching a tent anywhere. Well, so um, there's a lot of focus, particularly out uh, behind the Lowe's out mm -hmm. on Charlotte uh, Pike. Um, I, here's what I'll say. Uh, you got pretty extreme positions, but in the end, everybody wants the same thing. Everybody, I think people want folks to be sheltered right. and to find a place to go. How do you do that? So you have to bring everybody together. So last week we had an issue. Uh, Emily Luxon was involved in, in reporting on, on taking homeless individuals, individuals experiencing homelessness with COVID, out to the old jail on Harding Pike. Oh, okay. um, we finally got tired of everybody yelling at each other, and it's like, you know what, everybody to the table. And I don't think they'd been at the table very much before, because mm -hmm. they didn't know each other. It's like, people on both sides, to the table, let's figure out a solution. That is going to happen this week as well. And so I met with some folks on Sunday regarding um, situations out uh, uh, behind mm -hmm. the lows, and um, it's time we figure out a solution. Yeah. And because you can't just force everybody out because then they have to go someplace else. Right. You got to come up with a solution to deal with not only the individuals who want to find shelter, but individuals who have mental health issues or mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, it's got to be a comprehensive plan. And talk to Judy Tackett over at Metro Homeless Impact Division yesterday. We're going to try to focus on it and figure out if we can come up with something. Yeah. And I see the mayor tomorrow. I'm going to talk to him about it as well. Give him my best. I will. Just please do. And uh, listen, we'll find out more about what happened with that shooting later today. But I yeah. think that you guys think you'll mention that in the meeting tonight? Yeah, we'll uh, mention in the meeting tonight. Yeah, certainly some part of it. And again, uh, one loss of life. The only person we understand shot and killed in that case was the shooter. Um, one person in critical that was injured, so we'll continue to monitor it. Jim, thanks for coming on. Sure thing. As always, it's good seeing you. We'll see you again sometime soon, all right? Okay. My friend, we'll take a break. Programming note about tomorrow, right after this. Stay